creating and failing over an Azure SQL 2014 always on high availability cluster. Let's try this out. First, we log into our Azure account and I'm using the free trial. It lasts for 30 days. Now I press new uh, cluster in here in 2014. I should find the option. There it is. Anyway, let's have a look at it. We're going to do the SQL Server 2014 always on preview. Automates the deployment of a SQL Server always on availability group for high availability of SQL Server. It will provision two SQL Server 2014 enterprise replicas, a primary and a secondary, one witness file share in a Windows cluster. It also provisions two domain controller replicas, primary and secondary. In addition, it configures an availability group listener for clients to connect to the primary SQL Server replica. The diagram below shows the deployment after the process completes, which is pretty impressive. And it does everything for you. And all you do is press create. Well, we've got to fill in the, the details. I'm going to call my resource group. Let's give it to 2014. Uh, re source group. I'm going to use my own username. Create a password. Confirm. SQL Server settings. Fills in defaults for us. Now the pricing tier. I'll go with the default. It's actually quite pricey per month. £845 a month. Mm. I'll select that. Oh, that's not too bad. The file share witness is already pre-selected. Use administrator password, it's all good. SQL service at contoso.com. It's interesting. Let's do that. And press OK. Now to the optional configuration. Create or join a domain. It's all pretty good. Virtual network. Subnet. Storage account. Using existing storage account. Default settings, diagnostics not configured. Okay. It's my free trial subscription, my location. I'm going to set to Southeast Asia. Create. Initializing deployment. Creating SQL Server 2014 always on. Let's have a look at the progress. The resource group has been created. It's creating resources, deploying. And we can look at some of the, the steps as it progresses. This process will take roughly an hour to finish and there are, there are many, many steps that will up update as time goes on. I'll leave that go and then we'll come back and continue. The deployment of the SQL 2014 always on high availability cluster was successful. Here it is here. Let's have a look at some of the, the final tasks. And there should be lots of tick boxes or ticks, yes. There it is. Everything was successful. So the first thing we have to do is log on to each of the servers, SQL 1 and SQL 2, and have a quick inspection. So we press connect, get a little RDP script. I can open that. Okay. I've just logged on to one of the SQL servers. 
if I navigate, I sh I sh I'll get this SQL 2040 Management Studio, the SSMS, open that up, and just uh, connect using Windows Authentication. I'll connect to the to the other one also. So they're both there. SQL Server 1 and SQL Server 2 are both on the same domain, the same subnet. The one is the primary and the other is the secondary. These two servers are in us in Southeast Asia and, and if my local server is in the UK they're not in the same domain so I won't be able to connect to them. So in order to allow me to connect from my, my local SSMS, I'll need to change the the server authentication to SQL Server and Windows Authentication Mode on both servers. Just for now. Saves me putting my local computer onto the same domain. This is the quickest way. This is the quickest way. I also need to create a SQL logon on both servers. A new logon. I'm just gonna call it Sean 2. Oops, I'm just gonna call it Sean 2 with a password user mapping Oops, server roles I'll make it a sys as admin and make a duplicate SQL logon on this other server One, two. Oops. This is so that we can test the failover when I turn one of the servers off. This is also a sysadmin. Now I'll just restart each server individually just to make sure SQL Server Authentic or Mixed Mode SQL Authentication Mode is enabled. And now SQL 2, restart. started. Let's just check the availability settings. That still appears to be primary. That still appears to be secondary. Okay, let's log on from the local SQL Server Management Studio. Okay, my local copy has connected to the primary version of SQL Server here. So, we, so this is the, the high availability cluster, these two here, and, that's this, and this is just an external connection to it. If I expand the databases, this is a sample database you just get when you deploy the, the default 
um, cluster from Azure. And I can create a table which will be duplicated across both instances. Okay, ID int no nulls primary key and a uh, identity name and var car 50. And that's just a very simple table. I'll just leave it. My table. New query. Select all from my table. There's nothing there, so let's uh, just add some values for us to test with. some data. Now uh, to demonstrate the clustering availability replicas we have one and we have two. That's our listener. And the listener is redirecting our our connection to the primary over here. Now, if I go, with, if I was to go back to Azure and click on the SQL to SQL one server, and just did a a complete restart of the whole server, of the whole virtual machine. It eventually would disappear from the from the resource group, and and the secondary, uh, the, the SQL two would then become the primary. So we'll watch this happening now. So right right at this point in time, I can the shutdown hasn't finished yet. So I'm still able to query. Or maybe it's already. Let me just reflect refresh. Still primary. Shutting down. Okay, we just lost our server. But, um, okay, so if I was to, we've lost it now. Reconnect. has taken me let's just watch this when I refresh the primary and secondary have now been swapped around so we go SQL 2 is now the primary <coughs> SQL 1 is still starting up I can still select from my table and the data is present so I haven't lost any data so if I refresh that again we should see them both online. So that's that's that's, that's now the secondary. Another way we can look at this is to view the dashboard. Okay, we can see that there's a, uh, the secondary and the primary, the failover mode is automatic and synchronized. Now we will restart SQL 2 and that will then reinitiate re another swap between the primary and the secondary. SQL 2, let's restart it. Yes. 
and we'll see how it looks from the, the dashboard here. It auto refreshes. An error occurred on the always off on dashboard. Time out expired. I'm probably going to need to reconnect again. see that uh, when I refresh oh, it, it will refresh it should refresh automatically and primary and secondary would have been swapped around there we go critical warnings availability replicate is disconnected it will come back data synchronization state data synchronization state of some availability the database is not healthy that is okay the next refresh it should just be back to normal went back to primary and secondary and that's how it's done and that is my SQL 2014 high availability cluster hosted in Southeast Asia